Good evening, friends, family, and more students. I'm happy to see you here again from the Green Meadow Waldorf community. The 7th and 8th graders have been working very hard for many weeks in preparing this entertaining show for you, so we hope you enjoy. We have two more performances after this show. This is our second. There will be one more tomorrow at 1.25 and another at the same time tomorrow night, 7 p.m. So perhaps you'll want to join us for more fun. <laughs> In the middle of the show after Act One, there will be a brief intermission, which I'm sure you noticed. Plenty of delicious looking refreshments out there. For anybody who did not buy tickets for that on your way in, you may purchase tickets in the center of the lobby to then pick up your refreshments during intermission. <clears throat> and now without further ado, I would like to invite you to climb aboard our pirate ship with us and embark on a voyage to the coasts of England around 100 years ago. a canarder or cutting out the P&O. Never shipped a handspike. Yes, I did my best for you, and why? It was my duty under my indentures, and I am a slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error, no matter. The mistake was ours, not yours, and I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you, for it would reflect upon my well-loved group. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering teeth of mystery. When Fred Drake was a little lad, he grew so brave and daring. His father thought he'd apprentice him to some courier seafaring. I was a lass, his nursery maid, and so without to my lot to take and buy this promising boy.
my obligations Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. But, but collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel bound to devote myself, heart and soul, to your extermination. Poor lad! Poor lad! Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. <laughs> I know why. Nevertheless, I mustn't tell you it wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It's only. Half past eleven, and you are one of us till the clock strikes twelve. True. And until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Here, here. Then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you, you are too tender-hearted. For example, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. But when you attack a stronger one, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. <laughs> then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course, we are orphans ourselves and know what it is. Yes, but it has gotten about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships proved to be manned entirely by orphans. And so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's whole mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylum, which we know just is not the case. But hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. That's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock I would. After 12 I wouldn't. Was ever a man placed in such a delicate situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, what's to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. <laughs> I feel some little difficulty about you. It's true I admire you very much, but I have constantly been at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I've seen in that time. And I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. I think, I think it is. That is my impression. But, but as I have never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it's possible I, I may just be mistaken. <laughs> but what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person to find out she is on the whole plain. <laughs> oh, Ruth is very... Well, very well, indeed. <laughs> yes, there's a bit of a fine woman about Ruth. Do you really think so? I do. <laughs> then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her, and in consideration for you, sir, I will leave her behind. No, no, her. This must not be. We are rough men. Rough. We lead a rough life. Rough. And we are not so utterly heartless to deprive thee of thy love. I think I'm right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one. No, I thought there wasn't. <laughs> Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Very well, Frederick. And when your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick. It cannot be. I do not think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick. I shall live and die a pirate king. <laughs> Die. I'm to the brave black flag, I find the play a sanctimony. 
Tommy is caught with a pirate head in a pirate heart. to our union. Hark! Surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to approach her all but inaccessible lair? Could it be Custom House? No, it does not sound like Custom House. Confusion. It is the voices of young girls. If you should see them, I am lost. <laughs> How marvelous! How surpassingly marvelous! A bevy of beautiful young maidens. How surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What delicacy. What refinement. <laughs> and Ruth. Ruth told me she was beautiful. <laughs> oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. Since you play, I'm not the one to block so. Your face is lined, your hair is red. It gradually got so. Pray <laughs> the Lord and to deceive me. I who trust it so. I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. <laughs>
ever so far behind. Oh, we will be here presently. Remember, poor Papa is not as young as we are, and we came over a rather difficult country. Yes, yes. Okay. Very nice. But how thoroughly delightful it is to be so entirely alone! <laughs> but alarming costume. <laughs> but under these particular circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. <laughs> but who are you, Sir Speak? I am a pirate. <laughs> Shine me. <laughs> this evening I renounce my vile profession, <laughs> and to that end, O oh pure and peerless maiden, O oh blushing buds of ever blooming beauty, I soar at heart, I soar at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful is it?
must not lose our senses. Pirates 
as sons-in-law. <laughs> well, we object to major generals as fathers-in-law. But we weigh that point. We do not press it. We look over it. <laughs> ha, an idea. And do you mean you would deliberately rob me of these sole remaining props of my old age and leave me to go through the remainder of my life unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes. <laughs> so, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, yes, it all! Here we are again!
for you're at liberty. Our pirate rules protect you. And honorary members of our band, we do elect you. a year ago. The stucco on your baronial hall is scarcely dry. Frederick, within, these, within this chapel are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendant by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought dishonor upon what I have no doubt was an unstained family escutcheon. <laughs> Frederick, at what time is your expedition, expedition march against these scoundrels? At eleven, and before midnight I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with these pestilent scourge by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Oh. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lie in hearted. Be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventures. Dear sir, they come. <laughs> Thank you. 
out in the pirate's lair. Oh, joy unbounded, oh, sweet relief, oh, rapture unexampled. At last I may atone in songs like measure for the repeated acts of theft and pillage that had a sense of two Eastern dictation on circumstances victim have been guilty. Young Frederick, call your late commander. And your oh, mad intruders, how dare ye face me? Know ye not a rash one that I have doomed you to extermination? Have mercy on us. stern resentment and so I will be merciful stay on I don't know who, very likely, <laughs> the Astronomer Royal has decided, although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year and every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. <laughs> you are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. <laughs> and so, by a simple arithmetical process, you will easily discover that Although you've lived 21 years yet, if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit old. <laughs> Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day, I am a little boy of five. Is a little boy of five. <laughs> Most 
most absurdly whimsical. Five and a quarter. No one would think it to look at me. You will be glad now, I'll be bound. That you spared us. You would have never forgiven yourself when you discovered you would kill two of your comrades. But my comrades? <laughs> I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed until my twenty first year. No. Until you reached your twenty first birthday. <laughs> and by going by birthdays, <laughs> you're only five and a quarter! You don't mean to say you are going to hold me to this. No. We merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest up to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Oh, don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist upon the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We merely content ourselves to point out to you your duty. Your duty! <laughs> well, you've appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling, and shudder at the thought I was ever mixed up with it. But duty is before all. At any price, I shall do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you're one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. Oh, horror, what is the matter? Ought I to tell you? No, no, I cannot. And yet, as one of your band. Speak out. I charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. <laughs> General Stanley escaped from you on the plea he was an orphan. He did. Oh, right. I was there. <laughs> well, how it breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the Great. girl. Then, as, my, as your apprentice, I have no altar. <coughs> it is my duty to tell you that General Stanley. Yes, yes, Mark. General Stanley is no orphan. What? And more than that, he never was one. <laughs> Am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he dared practice on our credulous simplicity? <laughs> our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We will go and collect our band and attack the Timorden Castle this very night. But stay. Not a word. He is doomed. <laughs> away, away. My heart's on fire. I find the space deception to repay. This very night, my vengeance star shall hunt and sell me more. Away, away. Away, away. Ere I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with vengeance dark, it strikes me to the core, away, away.
fight with these walls And thought my soul a home of Western duty calls I must obey Yeah. 
Frederick was to have led you to death and glory. That is not a pleasant way of putting it. <laughs> um, no, madam, he will not so lead you, for he has aligned himself once more with his old associates. He has acted shamefully. Our course is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates alone. It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to us all. But we should have thought of that before we joined the four. <laughs> oh, it's too late now. <laughs> When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felonious little plans, little plans, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, innocent enjoyment, is just as great as any honest man, honest man. Our feelings we with difficulty smother, difficulty smother, and constabulary duties to be done, to be done. I take one consideration with a. Another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. <laughs>
see a light inside. The Major General comes so quickly hide. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. <laughs>
Yeah.